Andre Agassi, it's an absolute pleasure to be sharing a coffee with you. I appreciate it. I need coffee right now. It's been a long day. Did you start coffee from a young age or were you introduced to it? In About this 14. 14, getting up for school early in, you know, Florida, the tennis academy. When you walk into a cafe, what's your normal time of day? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about 8 o'clock, 12 yeah, o'clock yeah. and 5 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm go I start aggressive, then I'll move to a cappuccino, um, and then sometimes just like a, like a, just a long black. I just don't want to, I don't want it to be too good because I'll drink too much too late. <laughs> relationship with Lavazza now, it's been going strong for many years. Tell us about being part of this big, beautiful Italian family. Well, yeah, they've been great. I mean, they've been a great friend of tennis. They've been a great friend of my foundation, my mission and education. As a result, like, this partnership has been a beautiful one. And, uh, you know, hope hope they continue their, their interest and involvement in the game because uh, it feels right. You became a professional tennis player. And then for eight years, you decided not to come to Australia. And then your ninth year here, you come and you win the Australian Open. What kept you from us for so long? I hated tennis for yeah. a large part of my life. Of course. Uh, and as a result, I felt like the overall balance of my of my well-being uh, needed to come with fair departures from the game. And for me, spending my Christmas with family, friends, New Year's, and then starting this hamster wheel again felt incredibly exhausting to me, you know, so there's a lot of years I just didn't have, I didn't have the strength to do it. And I had a real coach in my life who taught me how to be better and, and I wanted to see what I could do. Do you remember your first impression of Australia? Because I know it's, it's all changed so much now, but it's still the place you want to fall open. Yeah, my first impression was I can't believe they actually like me with no hair. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll always love them for that. Yeah. Uh, but it always felt intimate here, it always felt relaxed, it always felt casual. But they always loved their sport, so it felt gladiator-ish as well, you yeah. know? So this combination of being kind of, I don't know, cool as a cucumber, but yet intense as a warrior, it's just, there was something very defining and delineating for me that helped, helped keep me on point, you know? And I attribute that to this culture. You famously said you never thought you'd write a book. Well, most tennis players can't read. <laughs> <laughs> But with that being said, no, no, it's not really a tennis book, you know. Yeah. Uh, different cultures, different things resonate, you know. I mean, I can't believe in India how much the story of the, my father and, and, and the trials and tribulations of that relationship res resonates. You know, and you you go to France and it's and it's it's the love story with Stephanie. You go to Italy and it's the it's a story of, of fall from grace to climb yourself back mm -hmm. to the top. You know, it's, I mean, d different cultures it resonates differently. Different people it resonates differently. Well, it's so good to chat with you, and I have to say this, I don't know what the rest of the, your time has for you, but as long as you keep coming back to Australia once a year and catching up over a coffee with us, we'll be happy. Yeah, but if we call it even, I'm yeah. just, that's good, and thank you. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks. Andrew. Thanks.